Ladies and gentlemen, wearing that lovely fedora. You like my hat? <laughs> yes. Uh, this one's got more feathers on it than the last one. Yeah. Okay. And how many of those hats, I mean, you had these hats before you had the chemotherapy, oh, yes. right? Yes. So uh, how many hats did you I'm have? Or 50 hats. Really? Yes. So we can look forward to at least for the next year not having you in the same hat every year, every if every week. I remember week. what I wore the week or two before. That's a problem, of yeah, course. Yeah, of course. Anyway, how you doing? I'm doing fine. It's a... It's not rainy, it's just a gray day here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, we're talking to her in Lake Oswego, um, Oregon. And uh, uh, she, uh, she, she is uh, an old lady uh, uh, and, and getting older, thank goodness. Uh, and, and she has... In, in my condition, getting older is a very good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> We, we've mentioned this before, and we've talked about this before, uh, and that is that uh, you have uh, a, a terminal bout of cancer. I, I don't know if we call it a terminal. <laughs> I call it my predicament. Your predicament. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, predicament, yes. You know, and, and uh, uh, you seem to be, can I say this, and maybe you correct me on it, you seem to be looking at this as an adventure. Hmm. Well, to a degree, what I, I, I'm not so sure adventure since I'm not very adventurous, but I've written about the fact that I'm just, you know, what happens to a person when they're told they're going to die in a relatively short period of time? I don't know how long that period is. Yeah. Everybody gives me, of the professionals, they give me a different time, time period. Um, Apparently less than a year, but more than a few months. So, you know, there you go. Yeah. Whatever it will be. But I spend a lot of time, because I'm, I'm curious how your life changes when you're told this, that you are going to die in a relatively short period of time and nobody, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. So that I kind of put my consciousness or part of my consciousness mm -hmm. over here sometimes and just watch what I'm doing and how it may or may not have changed what I do day to day. And in that sense, it's an adventure. I mean, it's only one person. I think we all go through this as the people who do each in our own way. Uh, and there's no right way, there's no wrong way. Um, in my case, I'm kind of studying me, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. By the way, I, I want to tell people that we're a little out of sync here because we're having to use a different system today, and uh, she's a little bit out of sync, and it has to do with the way I've got this thing set up, and I haven't got it set up perfectly yet, so I'm sorry for that. Um, it's okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know something? I hate to gripe about this, but fuck Skype. Are you going to do it again? <laughs> fuck Skype. God, I hate them. No, I may stop this whole thing because I don't have the equipment to be able to do it with, you know. So we'll see what happens anyway. Uh, where, where were we? Um, so My adventure that's kind of a, you know, I'm studying myself. <laughs> well, you're kind of turning it into an adventure, into a journey. And I yes, think that's yeah. probably the best way to handle it, you know. Uh, I don't know. You know, I'm... I'm writing something that I'll post on Friday um, about you know, people talk about fighting cancer all the time. Yeah. Um, and and as soon as you're diagnosed, you'll start hearing that phrase. I'm going to beat this. I'm fighting this. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Um, I it, it's you can't punch it in the nose and all of that stuff. Is is it a, a vigilance that's maybe supposed to keep? the cancer from growing or something um i just don't know what it means to fight and i would rather live than fight fighting is exhausting you know yeah i don't want to spend my time working that hard i want to spend it talking with you and a bunch of other friends and you know doing what i do that i like to do um and fighting cancer the the fight if, if you could call it that the fighting is to keep my weight up so I don't mm -hmm. become frail. Mm -hmm. um, and that's difficult, you know. I, when I was young, I used to mock 
the tall, skinny women who complained about having to eat so much to keep their weight up. Yeah, yeah, trying to lose weight, honey. Um, now I see their problem. You know? <laughs> um, and and I, I want to spend this time doing things I like to do. Right. So, um, I and fighting cancer just sounds way too tiring for me. Yeah. Uh, so, so your day-to-day is you, you have to do the chemo every couple of weeks two right? weeks every two weeks and uh that knocks you out for what a couple of days well it's unpredictable mm-hmm. this time i also besides having a day-long chemo i wear a body pump for two more days that puts more chemo in me when i come home that day oh, that's homework <laughs> yes my homework <laughs> exactly and um and then it's you know i was kind of tired the day after they unhooked me this time yeah um, and I'm and I'm tired today. It was last Thursday that I had it. Yeah. And I'm tired today, which is Tuesday that we're talking. Um, but I, you know what happened? This is only the third time I've had it. The first time I had it, after two days of feeling good afterwards, I was just as tired. I, fatigue was the right word. There was I'd never felt so tired almost. Right. Then last time that didn't happen to me, and now I'm waiting to see. If it's going to happen this time today, I feel a little spacey in the head, which is what usually referred to as chemo brain. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and we'll see how I feel tomorrow. But it's been very unpredictable. Mostly, I've been incredibly lucky. There's something about this long of uh, the amount of the number of side effects that there can be. Nobody has all of them, but I've had mostly is fatigue is mm-hmm. is the one that I've had. And not much, nothing else that's awful. So I'm terribly lucky so far. Wow. Well, it's good. It's good. So uh, uh, are you are you pretty well keeping up the uh, the uh, blog? Yeah. Yeah. I I publish every day that I want to. Yeah. yeah. And how hard is that to do with the chemo brain? <coughs> hard, hard during chemo brain. Yeah. Um and. Uh, uh, I mean, what I'm going to do is what we're recording today is what I will post tomorrow, mm-hmm. because I couldn't do too much yesterday. But I was really tired. Right. Um, and today too. So, I'll post this tomorrow, and that's an easy way out. I can just do a couple of sentences, you know, intro. Right. And people can watch or not, depending on how they feel. And then I'm I'm in the middle of writing a real one for Friday. I don't publish on Thursday, and of course. Collecting all the cool stuff for interesting stuff on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. So you're <laughs> keeping yourself busy. Oh, God, yes. I mean, I'm so far behind. I'll, I mean, quite, I, I'm, not, I'm not fooling around when I say mm-hmm. I'll die before I finish everything. Well, we, maybe we all will. You know, I mean, <laughs> that very good point. I like that. <laughs> you know, I mean, the thing I'll tell you, I, um, I, well, how can I put it? I've been, I've been somewhat depressed lately. Oh well, what's new, Alex? Yes, yeah, right. I've been. Uh, I, I've been, I've been somewhat. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, they're depressed uh, because I'm just the general health thing all the way around gets to me. You know, I can only imagine, I can only imagine with you, okay? I want to talk about that. I'd always, always said that long before I got cancer, I never wanted to be a professional patient. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Last week, I was at the medical center Mm -hmm. four days out of seven, four days out of seven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not how I want to spend my time any more than I want to spend it fighting cancer. Mm-hmm. But one of the things, even if you don't have something that's going to kill you like I do, the cancer, mm-hmm. um, when we get old, they medicalized old age. Right. That we spend all our time doing health things for ourselves or doctors telling us what to do for ourselves. And I wonder, I wonder how much of that is necessary, that, that we come to be defined by our health. And it's perfectly normal that... The older you get, a body is going to run down in different ways, even before you get anywhere near a serious disease that might kill you. Mm -hmm. Just things run down. But shouldn't we be thinking about or concentrating on 
ways to manage that as people get older, as opposed to making it a disease with a name. They keep giving all this stuff names and, and thinking up new drugs for them. That it's perfectly normal that we're going to walk slower, that we might have balance problems, that we our joints might hurt. I mean, the things that happen to a lot of people that won't kill you, they turn them into medical problems. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's necessary, necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't like being identified only by my health. You know, there's a, I've been here for 77 years. There's a lot more to me mm-hmm. yeah. than, than what my health is currently. Yeah, but I, uh, the thing I guess that's, that's, that's depressing me is... Uh, um, you know, I mean, I, I went to the doctor, and there's this whole thing with the prostate, and it's not, they told me I'll live to be 95 with it. It's not uh, something that's going to kill me. But it all of a sudden, I'm getting to see the fragility of, my, of myself, you know. Oh, and, and, that's, and, talk about that. And also the, 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 the fact that, how do I put this, uh, that the doctor says to me, hey, something else will kill you first. And I'm going... Oh, that's wonderful. You know, I I can only hope that it's something else that kills me first. I mean, what are we making a bet here? I mean, is there are there odds on this deal? You know, I I just don't I I don't get it. That's not, that's a whistling past the graveyard type of phrase. Yeah. Um, it's uh, but but I was really interested in what you you said about feeling not frailty. What was the word you used? Uh. Mm, uh, 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 well, I, 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 what's the word? I, what was the word I used? I forget now. Uh, um, well, that's one of the problems of old age. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but, feeling not as sure of your health. Right. As when you're right. younger. Well, I mean, for instance, uh, uh, in the old days, I get a cold. I got a cold. That was it. Now the cold These lingers. Days- you know. I don't get them very often, but when I the rare occasions I've had a cold in my old age, it's like getting the flu when I was twenty five. Yeah, yeah. And this was just a cold that I had recently, and and then they give you medicine for various things, and the medicine knocks you out. I mean, I'm taking a thing uh, called I'm, I have bad reaction to drugs. Okay, they I if you give me a drug that's yeah, they give me the lowest dose, it will affect me. Okay. And um, they gave me this drug, gabapentin, to kill my uh, numbing of the feet, or somewhat help with the numbing of the feet. And they said, you should take about 300 g- milligrams a day. Well, I'm only taking 100, and I wake up, and I'm groggy. And I'm groggy all day. I'm loopy all day. I'm loopy do you, today. Do you, do you still and, not drink coffee? Uh, what do you mean, still not drink coffee? Look at that, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the coffee doesn't help. But I mean, and last night I didn't even take the gabapentin and I still have the loopiness, you know? So, I mean, all of a sudden they start giving you these drugs when you're older, figuring, eh, what do you, what, what, you're not gonna need it, you know? You, you, you're not gonna need all your, all your stuff, right? You don't go to work every day. You don't need- uh, you mean Your faculties. Your faculties, yeah. Uh, and and but also- Do you have to take that drug? Uh, if I don't want my feet to be as numb or hurt as much, but uh, I, I, I'm I maybe going to stop taking it because I don't like the way it's making me feel. I'm groggy right now from it, and I didn't I take it last it night. Cannabis is legal, and I use it to put me to sleep and keep me asleep at night. Yeah. And the new one that I'm using, mm-hmm. new edible, mm-hmm. uh, when I wake up in the morning, I am groggy, mm-hmm. but a cup of coffee puts me right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, one drug, then the next. Keep it up, keep it up. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, if I'm a little loopy, too. As long as we're doing all of this, yeah. we should also talk about, as long as we're talking about our health, we should also talk about all of the jokes late night comedians do about old people just talk about their everything that's wrong with mm-hmm. them. And that there's nothing wrong with that. They might think that it's funny and awful. They'll get there one day. Don't worry about them. But it's terribly important because among among ourselves it's terribly important because the society at large, like those comedians, doesn't let us do that. 
and we're not supposed to, you know, but um, the culture just wants us to go away. Mm -hmm. They don't want to employ us. They don't want, um, they think we're all demented and they would, and they also want to impoverish us all by taking away social security and Medicaid. Um, and so I think it's terribly important that we talk among ourselves among, about these things. So many things that are wrong with us at any age in our lives aren't things like I've got cancer that's going to do something terrible to you. They're things like a cold that are driving you nuts and your nose is running all day long, you know, um, or smaller or like your feet. If you take this drug, your feet won't hurt and so on. It's terribly important to exchange notes about those things or just talk with each other mm -hmm. about it because it becomes, because first of all, the culture has done it to it. It's made our health so much a part of our lives. So we're kind of stuck with it, and the doctors keep pushing pills. Some are terribly important, but I'm not so sure all of them are. Um, but we should be able to do that, and we should just ignore the younger people who make fun of us for doing it. Well, I want people to realize something, that the reason I, I finally found this out a couple about a year ago. I finally decided it. The reason old people are grouchy is we're in pain a lot. There's, there's, you grouchy? Huh? I'm not grouchy. Oh, I'm grouchy. I mean, I have crabby old lady, but she's just my alter ego. It's not because yeah. I hurt anywhere. Yeah, but I mean, I just find that I, as I've gotten older, I get grouchier, just simply because I'm, um, uh, uh, I, I hurt. You know, I have a little pains. I have my feet ache, and I'm uh, incredibly lucky that I don't hurt anywhere. Yeah, yeah, but you know, here's the thing that bothered me. I was going to do a, a thing about it, um, uh, a post about it. And that is, I am sick and tired on my Facebook page. Whenever I say something like, I didn't like that movie, they write back, you know what's coming, don't you? Well, that's just because you're old. Oh, really? Yeah, you're, or, or you're, 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 you don't like that movie because you're acting like an old fart. I mean, they well, will say that stuff. That? Huh? No, See, no, but okay. what I'm, no, what I'm saying is they're dismissing my opinion. Yes. Because of my age. That's right. That's right. And do they have a right to do that? I don't think so. I don't think so either, but that's because I happen to be 79 years old and I'm upset by it. But yet, I will, that's why I don't post things on my Facebook page anymore, or opinions, because I just don't want that, oh, well, you're being dismissed because I'm an old fart, <coughs> you know? You know... Um, I agree with you, um, but it's not going to change anytime quickly. No. Yeah. Um, the whole culture is built. I've mentioned this to other people. Is if you watch any of the late night host, you know, interview shows yeah. like Seth Meyers and Stephen Colbert and the rest of them, mm -hmm. at least four nights out of seven, every one of them in their first, you know, one-liner monologues on the news when they first start. Every one of them will include an anti-aging joke. Every single one of them. Four days out of five. Well, here's my question. If those were racist jokes four nights out of five, they wouldn't be working. That's right. Well, what's so different about ageism? Nothing. You know, except it, we don't... We, the culture allows us to pick on old people because nobody... Nobody likes old people. They're all afraid they'll grow old one day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, a girlfriend and I were going to start a, um, a site called Nobody Wants to Listen to Old People. You know, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's true. I mean, it, they, they dismiss age. And I'm sorry, we have something to say. You know, but I'm getting to feel irrelevant. You know, I feel like I'm slowly disappearing mm -hmm. that's what happens to us yeah and and i think i am actually <laughs> you mean physically you actually are <laughs> you know fading away into the back i honestly believe i'll be dead for like five weeks and somebody will say has anybody heard from alex lately <laughs> You know, like like we never noticed him before, but, you know, suddenly he hasn't been here for a while, and m maybe he's sick or something. What? You know. Yeah. And, um, you know, really, really annoying old people, they really get a lot of a brunt of the jokes, 
And, but young people don't. You know, they're yeah. really annoying young people, too. <laughs> Give me an example. When you talk about somebody like a Colbert or, a, or whoever doing a joke, uh, can you remember one specifically? That, Not right now, yeah. I can't. But, but it's just they say something and you go, that's ages. Yes. You know. It's always something about something wrong with an old person. Well, Mr. Uh, Bill Maher, who considers himself Mr. Liberal, right? Mm-hmm. Ages jokes up the ass on that show. I'm telling you, on all of them. All of them. Yeah, but that one in particular. You yeah. know? Watch the others. That does no different on any of the rest. I they think I told you this story before, uh, but years ago, I was um, uh, uh, working at KQED, doing a show over there, Comedy Tonight, and I, I was over there one day having to uh, do voiceovers for the show, and... Um, the receptionist said, by the way, when you're through, uh, the guy wants you over at the uh, over easy offices. The guy who's the head of the show wants to talk to you. And I went, what does he want to talk to me about? Over easy was a show that you downs hosted. And by the way, I looked it up. You downs is now eight, 99, 98 years old. Yeah. He's still alive. So not, yeah. Anyway, they were, did the show about old people's call over easy. And he sat me down and he said, I was listening to your show the other day. By the way, I listen to you every morning because I drive my kids to work and they like listening to your show and so on. And he said, you were pulling some jokes about old people. And I said, yeah. He said, stop. <laughs> Good for him. I said, Good for him. Well, he said, you know, it's hard enough getting older and keeping your... Uh, self-esteem without having some guy on the radio making jokes about it mm -hmm. and I thought about it for a second and I said you know you're absolutely right and from that day on I never did another old person joke or, or allowed it on the show by the comedians mm -hmm. it um, old people jokes jokes about old people are the last acceptable prejudice in America yeah um, they used to say that that was true about old people, but they're making far bigger strides than us old folks are in acceptance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was a time when they might, you know, it, it was, I, I would have agreed that those were the two things that you could still make jokes about. Mm -hmm. But they've had a much better campaign than old people have. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it, 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 people should remember this that you know it i'm it, like i'm getting to the point where i just you know i wake up every morning and i go life isn't getting any better it oh, used there was a time oh. in my life where it got better you know and now it's only getting being it's, i don't know maybe it's just me maybe i should be happier about it you know maybe i should embrace you know, happiness they say is a choice uh happiness is a choice and it's one that i i've never accepted <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you know, there's a, I, I think that a lot of old people are unhappy about where they are in old age because they can't do things they could when they were younger yeah which are mostly physical things mm -hmm. um, and there's plenty to do I mean you know now because of the cancer I mean it wasn't but a few months ago, I could run up some stairs nearby here. I can't do that anymore. I can walk up the stairs slowly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's okay. I mean, I can still walk up the stairs. Yeah. Um, it, it's okay. So, you know, if, if time is the problem, I just give myself more time. Um, it it doesn't, and, and I can go on and do other things I like. Right. You know, it, I don't see the point in lamenting what changes. And what you can't do anymore it's enjoying what you can do still and that you're still here to do it well to any kids who might be listening let this be a lesson to you but they're probably not listening to us because we're two old people talking about getting old and they don't give a shit they don't think it's ever going to happen to them well we didn't either when we were there well yeah i guess i guess we were assholes as well anyway hey listen we've run out of time you've been out of sync most of the time i think <coughs> But we'll see when the recording comes out. Uh, but uh, that's because I am having to use this whole new system. And, uh, well, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to get into the technique, uh, the te technical part about it. I'll do that later on the show tonight. 
Anyway, love talking to you, dear, and we'll talk to you in two weeks, okay? Two weeks, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you will find her at timegoesby.net. That's her blog. It's terrific. Find out what it's like to get older, okay? <laughs> Bye-bye, Ronnie.